So, my friends, how do you make money with your art using the spaghetti method? Well, that's what we want to talk about in today's episode of the Sketchbook Podcast. Let's jump right into it, shall we? Here's the story. I was in a mall one day and I was spotted by some random person and he was like, hey, are you that YouTube guy? Yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm that YouTube guy. What's what's up? And we were talking, we were talking about like art, making art, making a living out of art. And it finally got down to him, how do, him asking me basically, how do you make money with your art? And I was like always wondering, okay, fine, you know, so, Having the art skills, the skill of art is obviously a very basic requisite when it comes to say making money with your art, right? You gotta be good at your art. That's that's like basic, basic of the basic things. I was telling him a couple of things, but also it also came to my head that there is actually more to it than that, than that just that thing. And I can't, can't say that word. There's more to it than just making art very clearly. And then, came the spaghetti method. The spaghetti method is what you can actually use to make money with your art. It's like super real. It's a very, very, very good method. Now, I have made a full-time living with my art for the past seven or eight years, right? And I've made a quite a decent chunk of money by my own standards. I'm clearly no Warren Buffett, as you can see. I'm not rolling my Rolls Royce. <laughs> He's not rolling his Rolls Royce too, but that's probably why he's probably rich, right? But the thing is, I'm just like an average Joe, your normal guy, who's not a beginner, but has been at this game for like a, a small sliver of time in the infinite times of the universe, which is like five, seven years, which is like a blip, right? But anyways, it's a blip. And I want to sort of share what I have done, you know, I've, uh, yeah, so that's, that's my, that's the three, that's the three, the, the, oh God, I'm so, I'm so getting so stucky stuck today. Anyways, so how do you make good six figures with your art using the spaghetti method? That's what we're going to talk about. So what is the spaghetti method? First of all, you got to know how a spaghetti is made. Spaghetti is a nice food. I love spaghetti, right? I eat spaghetti every single night. And that's why I got fat. But that's another story for another day. But I used to make, eat spaghetti every night. And then I sort of noticed how spaghettis are basically made. And spaghetti works like this. You have the spaghetti, which is the dry, non-cooked, uncooked version of the spaghetti. Then you need water. Then you need salt. Then you need vegetables, if you're like a vegetable guy. Then you need sauce. And then, then you, if you're like some, some bodybuilding dude, you probably need some protein in that thing. You know, if you're a vegetarian, you put some tofu or paneer. Or, uh, you know, if you're, if you're like a non-veg dude or a gal, you, you put some, you know, chicken or steak or whatever you want to put that thing in, right? So these are all the ingredients that are needed to make spaghetti. There are multiple ingredients. The thing is, if you just take the uncooked spaghetti and just cook that thing and try to eat it, you can't. It's very hard. You at least need water to make it at least go into your stomach. You know, you need water to boil it. That is the first step. And then you need to do a whole bunch of other things in order to be, you know, in order to eat that thing. But the basic is you got to boil the spaghetti. They've got to put the sauce, the vegetables, the, the protein in, and then you eat it. See, there are like three or four things that are there along with the main spaghetti in order to make it eatable, right? Same thing goes with art. This is what I've done. I've always asked myself, why have I made money with my art? There are clearly a lot of people with equal, if not more amount of skills than I have, yet they are not able to make a good chunk, a chunk of money or good, good living with their art. What have I done? What have I sort of, uh, you know, done to do get all these things, right? I'm able to run a studio, I have a team, it's just like, yeah, how, how am I able to do that? I'm, I'm working like two to four hours a day, 90% of the days, and, and, and my week is fairly decently empty, right? How am I able to do all these things? So I've realized that I have the skill of art, yes, but I've also developed the skills of other things, such as, video production. I can produce great videos. 
I can story tell really well. I can market myself really, really well. I know how to create offers. I know how to get leads for my offers. I know how to sort of, ah man, traffic, you can hear a problem thing, right? And then I know how to graphic design. It was a big skill of mine that I didn't realize I had. A lot of people, right, at the start of my career were like, man, your websites are really nice. Like, like who designed it for you? It's like, it, it was me. Oh, really? <laughs> like, yeah. It was just me, <laughs> you know, I, I, I didn't pay anyone. And it's like, oh, your videos are really nice. Who who made it? It, it, it was me again. <laughs> so really, yeah, yeah, to totally not lying. It's totally not lying, right? So I was able to sort of take all the skills that I had and then I was able to create a product that people actually wanted. The idea is this, if you want to make money with your art, along with the art skills, you also need to develop other complementary skills that are on the business side of things. Now, there are very many skills on the business side of things. What do you focus on? There, there's so many things that you could focus on. I want to actually give you something that is extremely tangible that has really helped me. It is a book called Rework, right? It's a, it's a very small book and it's like a buffet. The book is like a buffet and it basically teaches someone how to create a product or a service or a business that is actually good, that actually serves people, that actually can last the test of time. Now, clearly I'm not sponsored by anyone, right? I just love that book so much. That 250 rupee or probably like I paid like $9, five to $9 for that book made me half a million dollars. I swear, kid you not. Right. I don't like to throw numbers and I'm honest, dude, whatever I say is true. Right. So so I'm, I'm not trying to boast or trying to say, hey, I'm I've done this. That's not my point. I what I'm what I'm trying to say here is I am a guy, a normal dude who's put in normal amounts of work for a decent chunk of time. And I was able to do this. Most probably you can do it, too, or probably not. I do not know. Right. It, it all depends on your temperament. So the spaghetti method is this. First, step one, get really good at what you do in terms of your art, right? That is step number one. And then step number two, get another skill and see if you can pair those two skills, right? One on the business side of things or one that is slightly more marketable, slightly more demanded by other people. Now, it all seems like fancy business terms, right? But you gotta understand, if you want to make money, you're basically asking someone else to give you money. And for someone else to give you money, you gotta give them something that has of value, right? Now, you can rip them off, that is one, right? You can just give them less than what they paid for, or just give them what they actually paid for, which is like a decent transaction, right? A fair transaction, or give them more than what they paid for so that you can actually law, you know, have a business that lasts for a very long time. Or you can just steal people, you know, steal from people, right? So that's like the other one. So obviously, we're not going to steal from people. I mean, if that's a strategy, go ahead. Then why are you watching this <laughs> video or this podcast, right? And two is obviously we don't want to give them or scam anyone, meaning you they give you money and you're giving them something that is of lesser value than what they actually paid for. Then they would feel bad. Then they would like... They would say like you're a scammer. I don't want you, and 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 you would feel bad too if you had any sense of integrity. But anyways, <laughs> but but the whole idea is you want to actually create a product or a service that other people want. That's a key part, right? Art is about what you want. Money is about what other people want. That's a beautiful thing. Now. You can actually create something that you want that other people would like. For example, I made drawing cam for myself, my younger self, and that clearly was needed by a lot of other people. So step one is scratch your own itch, right? You gotta first understand that you gotta get good at your art and then, I wouldn't say step one, I'm confusing you guys, I'm sorry, right? First, get good at your art. And then also learn a valuable skill in the market that other people would pay a lot of money for. For example, again, another example is I had the skill of editing. I made money with my video production and editing skills way before I made money with my illustration and drawing skills. Why is that? 
drawing illustration, it's a weird arena where you have to sort of play in a different space in order to make money with it. Unless you're going into the industry, literal industry of illustration, children's book illustration, comic illustration, or concept art illustration, which is big, vague, and I do not know how to exactly play in those places or spaces. I can do it, but I don't think I'll make as much money as I am making right now playing in that industry, you know? So, but what I did was I, I taught, taught myself more valuable money-making skills, which were like editing, video production. I still like them, right? I still love them. And then marketing. Then I was fairly good at, you know, communicating and speaking. And, and I used to host a lot of shows in my college, you know, like I'm that anchor guy gets on stage and say, hello, everybody. Next up, we're coming right up. Is this dude dancing for this song? Right. Like like that. So I, I, I taught myself, I indulged myself in a lot of other skills. And then I finally picked one to two skills. That's the key part. You don't get yourself distracted with too many things. One to two marketable skills that are actually good and are in demand. Right. So and then you can see how they sort of pair along with your art, because, for example, when I made drawing cam, I was like, I am not going to make another course. Right. Course. I hated courses. I was like, I'm going to create a startup. No, I, I wasn't like that. I wasn't I wasn't like I was going to create a start. I, I was going to create a product. I was going to create a good quality product that is different from the market. Then I was looking at some of the products that I used to use in terms of the fitness space. I took inspiration from that. See, fitness, I was into that. I took some skills that I've learned from fitness, took it into art, then created a product that was like a mixture, a combination of other things, you know, and, 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 and made drawing cam. Now I see a lot of people copying it. That's, that's good. That means if a lot of people are copying you and your system, then that means you're actually doing a good thing. The, the side note on that front is like you don't get you don't freak out that they're copying like you'd never freak out that they're copying that's a beautiful part right so that's that's the deal folks you gotta get good at your art be so good that they can't ignore you so that means that's going to take time obviously if you want to make a good living for a long period of time then you got to put in a long amount of time so that means you gotta you gotta put in a couple of years and then you got to sort of go through that couple of years without killing yourself. That's the second one. And how do you actually basically do that? You actually make the process more enjoyable and bearable. Maybe have a side, have a day job and then come and practice your art. That's what I did. I had a job. I practiced my art. And then, uh, you know, I started freelancing on the side and then started gaining money from that. Then I was able to take some time off from work. And then during that period of time, I was able to like put in more time into my art to improve my skills. I was able to put in more more time in my videos to improve my video skills and then I was constantly collecting skills like you collect ingredients in order to make spaghetti that's how you do it you need multiple ingredients to make money with your art you cannot just make money with your art literally unless you're Picasso it's going to be very hard I would say right focus on see there are there are a couple of ways uh, I, I, I wouldn't say you cannot it's just a longer path a way longer path and most people that i see making money with their art are not just good at their art they have one or two other complementary skills that they're pretty damn good at most of the time it's video some other time it's writing some other time it's like management meaning they're able to sit down put their head down look at the market see what product or services the market wants they're able to organize themselves enough to create a product that would actually sell that is a management skills right or or product creation skills business skills whatever you want to call it i, I don't know the name for it but that is the idea so where do you go from here? I want to give you some actionable steps so that this doesn't feel like another podcast that you listened to and you stopped doing. Step one is to devise yourself a plan in terms of your art for the next two to three years. Think in terms of the two years. You know, the Matt Devella YouTuber has this idea called the two-year rule. Dedicate yourself to something intensely for two years and see what happens and I can trust you oh god it's it will change your life you know you dedicate yourself to one to two things one is more preferable most of us need two things one to two things 
and you go all in on that and you see what happens. Now, here's the thing. Here's the caveat, caveat or whatever the whatever thing that people say. Do not spend too much time trying to decide what that thing is. Just pick something. It does not matter. Give yourself like three or four days. Think and start and pick. And guess what? You can always change later on. Give yourself like out of that two years, I'll try it for 100 days. You try it for 100 days. It doesn't work out. Mm, yeah, maybe it's not for me. You, you, you go to another thing. But you need to give it enough time so that you can see whether you like that thing or not before you jump off the ship too early. So that is extremely important. So give yourself a two year timeline where you devise a plan where you practice a particular style or kind of art that you want to get good at. Next is this. You want to sort of add a skill or another skill that particularly slightly speaks to you, that interests you, that you want to get good at. And then you sort of set or have creative production goals for both in terms of art. Oh, I got to make one illustration piece every week or, you know, two drawings every other day or something like that, you know, in that particular thing. And you correct a portfolio of works that would best represent your style. That is the art front on the business front or the other marketable skills front. You're like, okay, let's say you picked a video. I'm going to make a video every single week for the next two years. I want to do that. Great. Do that. Right. First, you're going to suck. Right. And with, but over time you will get good. So, to make it more bearable, what you do is look at it in terms of the law of 100s. 100 repetitions on the two skills that you're putting in. For example, art. You choose to be a children's book style illustrator. Great. 100 children's book style illustrations. Simple. Or 100, uh, what do you say, spot illustrations in the children's book style. Great. Awesome. That's that's a that's a repetition right there. Or you like, I now want to make a comic. I want to be a comic book guy. 100 comic strips. Awesome. Or 100 pages of a comic of the same story or different stories. It doesn't matter. 100 repetitions. And then from this side on the this end of the spectrum, which is so let's say you picked video, 100 videos, or let's say you picked marketing. How would you sort of take that thing? into an actionable thing. The goal is to actually take everything into an action and item so that you can actually do that. So in terms of say marketing, I want to market my art. Great. Let me say read a book that has stood a test of time, like the 22 immutable laws of marketing. Take one law and sort of bring it into sort of like action. For example, there's this law called the category of one in that book, which basically says you create something that has basically, you know, has no competition, right? Fantastic. Great. How do I actually put that into effect? Create an illustration, put it on a particular blog or a social media, and then make it so different that it basically, you know, just does not look like anybody else or anything that people are creating. So you have some a sense of difference. I mean, you, you can create better action plans for each and every single thing, but yeah, then you do 100, 100 of those repetitions in terms of, the, in terms of the marketing front. Let's say you are to create a podcast, 100 podcasts. You are to create a blog where you write about art, 100 articles. You are to sort of get good at sales, 100 sales calls, right? So just simply get your 100 repetitions. You choose to do commissions. $50 commissions at the start, right? You do 100 of those things. And then at like the 25th or so, you raise your prices. And then the next 25th, you raise your prices. And the next 25th, you raise your prices. And then by the time, you'll be like, man, I'm, I'm, I've, got, I've got a full-time living right here. That's, I mean, or a decent chunk of money that's coming on on the side for me. So that is how you can do it. That is how I think people can do it. The spaghetti method. You got you to put your... Spaghetti, you gotta make your spaghetti with a lot of ingredients or with the key ingredients because the spaghetti ain't gonna taste good if you don't have all the ingredients. That's the idea for the day, folks. Hope that is helpful. Get the book called Rework. And I also, I'm gonna sort of link a video from Tim Ferriss, which has really helped me. It's an 18 minute long video called How to Start a Business. The amount of depth and wisdom in that video is just incredible. I saw it a couple of years ago and I saw it, recently saw it again. And my level of understanding, my level of comprehension is just, that video is just 
has leveled up every single time I see it because, you know, there's wisdom in simplicity. So go ahead and watch that video. If you are a person who wants to create their product or a service, go ahead and watch that. And also, I would also link one of my videos called 10 Money Making Rules for an Artist. And these are some general frameworks that would actually help you, mental frameworks, ways of thinking that could actually help you in terms of making money with your art. So that is the deal, folks. Gotta, gotta learn some marketable skills. You gotta learn skills that other people want to pay money for. And most of the time, it's not just art. It's, an, it's art mixed with other key ingredients in order to make it eatable or in order to make it more money makeable. If that is even a word, that is it for this episode. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye. Grinding, money on my mind and I'm headed to the top. I won't stop until I find it. Write my name in diamonds, but all these lights are blinding. I wonder is it worth it? Feel like I'm losing my